Let me uh, let me read you just a few quotes of yours. This gets back to this topic we were on for a while about how to conceive of God. Uh, well, through your lenses, I guess, uh, the, the, and, and this business of kind of mind existing at different, at three different levels. Um, uh, matter, the level of matter, is weird enough so that it doesn't limit God's freedom to make it do what God pleases. Right. What does that mean exactly? Well, it's only. I mean, again, it's it's a, a it's poetry, and it's not it's not a scientific statement. I, I, I feel religion and poetry are very closely connected to me. What I write is, in, in a way, it goes much further than what I necessarily believe. I mean, when I'm, I'm, I, I don't make a when I make a statement like that, it's not a statement of belief. It's, just, okay. it's essentially a, a, a poem. Okay. And uh, but it may be right. I mean, you know, as many poet, many, many, many poems. Have a lot of truth in them, but they're not scientific statements. Okay, uh, but when you say something like that, God can be thought of as mind on a scale beyond our comprehension. Yes, that's not a scientifically reached conclusion. On the other hand, it that's is sort of a, a definition. It's, it's it's and it's a scientifically respectable definition in a certain sense, right? I mean, oh in yeah. other words, it, it's a way to talk about God that is compatible with a modern scientific worldview. Absolutely, yes. And, and and that's I guess your it sounds like that's your basic view of the connection between science and religion. It isn't so much that science uh, provides massive corroborating evidence for the hypothesis of divinity. Although in some ways you're saying the universe is suggestive of, of, of design, but but it seems to me a, gr a greater part of your emphasis has been that the two are wholly compatible. So the scientific right. and religious worldviews. Yes, and and I think what I mean to me the most important thing about religion is that it's always associated with great literature. That uh, every great religion has a great literature mm -hmm. as its foundation, and and that to me speaks much more for it than any connections with science. And, hmm. and so so it sounds. If I had to guess, I would say that in some respects you're. Your worldview, kind of technically speaking, is the worldview of an agnostic. Yes, I mean, in the strict sense, yes. I mean, agnostic is is what I am. I don't know anything. I, and, but that applies to science as well as to religion. I mean, the science is all about mysteries too. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't, if the world wasn't full of mysteries, we wouldn't do science. Right. And the same is true of religion. But your intuition is that there is, in some sense, more there than meets the eye. Oh, indeed. And that's true, of course, in, in science as well. And what are some examples of that being true in science? Well, I mean, for example, these gamma ray bursts, which are now the most fashionable part of astronomy, and, and we have known that these exist now for about 30 years. We're only just getting a glimmering of what they are and how they might actually be produced. I mean, they are, they are still totally mysterious when it comes to any sort of details. All we know is there are these these fantastic explosions, which are just unimaginably powerful, and they're going off at the rate of one every day, mm -hmm. all, all over the universe, and and that's sort of typical of of what's going on. And uh, we had no inkling that these even existed until th somebody put up some satellites 30 years ago for a t totally different purpose. Right. So you mean things keep kind of. Weird findings keep showing up. That yes, as soon as you start another, open another window, you see all kinds of stuff you never expected or even mm -hmm. imagined. And of course, the uh, I mean, some people would say that still, if you look at the pattern, the pattern of science is to take these novel things and ultimately explain them in materialistic terms. Maybe I should put quotes around materialistic, but still, explain them in scientific terms. Yes, and to them that suggests that. As for there ultimately being more than meets the eye in the religious sense, that, that this success of science really diminishes the prospects for there being in the in the end more than meets the eye, because ultimately everything is explicable in these concrete terms without reference to higher purpose or divinity or anything else. Right? That's one thing you hear. Yeah, I mean, I I remember recently I heard this beautiful metaphor for science, which. Uh, I don't remember who it came from, but anyway, science is a meadow, just a little piece of 
nicely cultivated grass where you can walk around in the sunshine. All around there's deep forest, mm -hmm. deep and gloomy forest which, which we don't understand at all. And, and as the, 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 the centuries go by, we chop down trees and the meadow gets a little bit larger. But the mysteries all around still go on to infinity. So. Right. And mysteries in some sense in different dimensions. I yes. mean, there are some mysteries that just may never be amenable to scientific inquiry, such as consciousness, right? Yes. right. I mean, that, that may well, just be more metaphysical question. Yeah, or maybe it is amenable, but it, it's, it, we don't know. It right. could, could be. But, I mean, but the point is there will always be other mysteries. But when, when you solve one, you find two more. Uh-huh. So just tell me in closing kind of how uh, your frame of reference, which is I guess I would characterize as technically agnostic, but on the other hand suspecting that there is an ultimate source of meaning. Is that right? Uh, yes. I mean, I, I wouldn't say suspecting. I mean, to me, the, it's a way of life. I mean, that, that I couldn't function if I didn't believe the thing had a purpose. And so... It's not really... A, a, a larger purpose. Yes. I mean, uh, the point is action comes before thinking. That, uh, I mean, life is action and not thinking. And, and so the belief in a purpose has to do with action. It has, it's, not, uh, it's not something that we could have come to logically, but it's just a part of, a part of, our part, part of, the f of being alive. So if you weren't... If you, if you, in this sense, didn't have a little bit of religion in your world view, you would have trouble just living. Yes. And what about people who say, well, then that's a cop-out. You're just, you're just relying on this belief as a crutch, the way you might, you know, on a, on a prescribed drug or something that made you feel good. Yes, well, maybe so. And, and <laughs> but then everybody has to rely on all sorts of things. I mean, we're not self-sufficient. It's silly to imagine that you could be. Uh-huh. And the larger point, I guess, is that whatever the origins of your intuition, uh, it is compatible with science. It's it's yes. it, it, it's plausible in light of everything you know you you know about science. Yes, I mean, I like to think of the the the, the metaphor of the two windows that uh, religion and science are two windows looking out on the universe, and you can't look through both of them at the same time, mm -hmm. but they both of them show the same universe and. Mm -hmm. There's simply different ways of looking. So, is, is your everyday work thinking about the natural world? Is it charged with a kind of reverence? No, it's not. No, my my everyday life in science is just tinkering around with mathematical tools, and I mean, it, it's rather like playing a musical instrument. And it's uh, if you're a professional musician, you don't necessarily. Uh, feel the same kind of musical emotions that the, as, as the listeners feel when they hear you play. But uh, your job as a professional is to play it well, and because the more feeling you put into it, the better. But I'd say most professional music musicians are capable of being transported by music, and certainly that's one thing that got them into the business. That's true, yes. Well, that's true of me too. But I mean, I'm certainly I'm, I'm in awe of th the way the universe is built. But that's not what uh, it actually animates me when I'm doing my job as a scientist. I'm scribbling equations on bits of paper, mm -hmm. and it's the equations themselves which I enjoy. And the awe is, is quite separate. It just pops up every once in a while? Yeah, the awe comes more when I'm looking out at the sky in the night. And I see. Okay. Well, I guess I'll, I'll let you get back to uh, scribbling equations and looking out at the sky. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for uh, having this talk. Well, thanks for coming.